often the case in the Sunday liturgy, the Old Testament reading and the Gospel really go together like dovetailing in a drawer, bookends, if you will. And we have a good example of this in that very important reading from the Old Testament that Anne read for us this evening. Moses is pointing out to the people in the law that God is setting up law in a different way than they were accustomed to. God's not setting it up over the basic principle of right and wrong. <coughs> that's in there, but that's not the basic principle of the law. The basic principle is the line that was very important there when the Lord says, I am compassionate. He doesn't say, I am just. I am compassionate. Okay. In other words, what does that literally mean? It means I can suffer with. Un pasio. I can feel with. And did you notice the things that were enumerated there? <laughs> if you cheat somebody, I'm going to remember that. That's what God is saying. Things like that. Because Why? Because I'm compassionate. I can feel with the person who got cheated. For example, I can feel with the alien. That's what God teaches us in the Old Testament. I feel with them, and don't you forget it, is what's in there. Now Jesus, as he often does, will take that law of Moses as the foundation and expand upon it. It's really fascinating how he answers the question. First, the context. The Sadducees had just been basically told off. If you look at the gospel just before this, Jesus told them, you don't know the law or the prophets. Oof. Okay. <laughs> and he made them look foolish. They tried to trick him with a question, and he tricked them. So they were silenced. Now, the Pharisees usually didn't get along with the Sadducees on anything, but the one thing they're going to get along with them on is we hate Jesus. So now we're going to come together, and the Pharisees are going to try to figure out how do we get this guy. So they've asked him questions now on taxes. Boy, there's a hot potato. Okay. <laughs> then they ask him questions on marriage and divorce. Oh, boy. <laughs> now comes this one. What's the greatest in the law? There's so many possibilities for him to be wrong. So many. And remember, these are all professionals, so they think they can, they can outbrain him. And one of the most foolish things people ever do, I've noticed, throughout the Gospel, is think you can outsmart Jesus of Nazareth. But boy, they plunge right in. They're going to trick him, they think. The Gospel tells you they asked him in order to trip him up. It doesn't say they really wanted to find out. There was a motive behind it. What is the greatest? So Jesus will quote from Deuteronomy. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and that's part of what we know it today, if you know anything about the Jewish world, the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone, and you shall love the Lord your God, and you know the rest. Okay? That's the greatest commandment, Jesus says. But the question was, which one is the greatest commandment? And Jesus answers with two. So what he did is he takes the law of Moses and he expands on it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The second is like the first, he said. He puts them together. In other words, you can't do the one without the other. If you're loving your neighbor, you're doing an act of love that God revels in. And if you love God, you better love your neighbor. You better not be coming to church and cheating people, for example. You have to think about this stuff. We all have to think about it. It might be something as simple as maybe you get the wrong change sometimes. <coughs> And you say to the clerk, actually, you know, you gave me too much. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if people would do things like that? <laughs> you have to be aware that you have to love your neighbor if you really want to love God. Jesus has expanded on the law and the prophets. The foundation, and he expands on it. Now, how will you apply that this coming week, or maybe this evening? How will you see love of God and neighbor alive in you? What is it that you can look at in our world, in our city, for example, that you could make a difference in? Or you could at least have your voice heard. For example, look at the voting that's coming up. 
How do the candidates love God and love neighbor? It's worth looking through there and seeing if you can answer it. I think very often you'll find bits and pieces at least, maybe not the whole picture, but some of it. But look at it. Think about how you vote. And if you don't vote, wake up. Start voting. It's time for you to take your citizenship seriously. And stop passing it by. Get moving. How do you take a look at that? How do I love God and neighbor? I'm here at church, but what does that mean when I'm voting on stuff? There's some practical applications. What does it mean when there is somebody who needs help? And that could be through all kinds of social service agencies in this state. I just heard about the news the other night about kids in child protective services that have to sleep in office buildings. You know, there are things like this going on all the time. That's only one thing. Love of God and neighbor. The second commandment is like the first. Don't forget the words of the Lord. As Moses expanded the minds of his people by saying you have to treat people right. And, he said, you better not oppress an alien. You better not. He expanded their minds on this. Jesus does the same for us. The love of God and the love of neighbor. The love of God is the greatest commandment, but the second is like the first, are the words of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, I challenge you, I encourage you, and me too, to put those words into practice. We need to do this, certainly as witnesses, to our candidates and our catechumens. But we also need to do this in fulfillment of our baptismal calling and vocation to be a holy priesthood, all of us. We need to act a certain way when we follow Christ. We need the courage to do it. Let's ask for God's grace at the table of His Word and the table of the sacrament of the Eucharist. Ask for God's grace so that the Spirit is alive in you and you can live out this calling, this vocation to love God and love God.